Hey everyone, this is a Trader Investor. In this video, I want to show you how I use uh, my screener and how do I set up the criteria for the screener. Last week, when I uh, built uh, one of my watch lists, I kind of hinted at some of the things that I look at, but I want to show you in more details exactly what I'm looking at when I'm building my screener and why I'm taking a look at that as well. And one thing that you'll notice that you have not seen in any of my other charts is that this uh, chart has moving averages. I do not use moving averages. I use support, resistance, horizontal, or trend lines. I use Fibonacci for my entries and exits, but I do not use uh, moving averages. I just want to show you here how these help me with my screener. They're merely here for the screener, and then I'll show you how I take action based on that screener. So one of the things that I do is uh, I start with a blank watch list and I go to my screener at the uh, end of the week, beginning of the week or Sunday night to identify potential threads, uh, trades for the following week. These are for swing trades that I'm looking to take advantage of. And as you can see, it's, it's 10, 10 is manageable. You know, I can run this uh, daily if necessary, or if I find that, Within this 10, I have some very good setup that is uh, uh, you know, preparing to trigger, then I don't need to add some more to it. So let's dive right into uh, my screener. First, I want to show you what I view. So I have created a view where I want to look at the sector, the industry, the last price and the percent change. I care more about the percent change than the value itself. Uh, for a quick view, when I want to see value, I'll be able to take a look at it up here in the charts. Uh, I want volume, uh, relative volume, uh, rating, uh, and then uh, weekly performance, monthly performance, three months performance, six months performance, yearly performance, and year to date. And all of these, you will see clearly why I have them listed here, because they are part of my screener. They are part of my criteria, why I'm selecting them. So before we go into that uh, criteria, what I'm looking for is on any chart that is bullish, I want a pullback and I want the pullback in the, uh, let's say these uh, moving averages zones so that I know there's a deep enough pullback and when there's a trigger, I can enter a call position to go long. And uh, for me right now, my screener is focused on the long side because the markets overall, they're in an uptrend, they're in a bullish trend. There is no indication that we're in a correction. So, and, and I look at the daily. This is daily for string trades. I will use the hourly for my trigger point, but this is a daily chart to go long. So on my daily, when price pulls back into a zone of, uh, moving averages, I will take advantage of that. So that's what I'm looking at. This is why you see my moving averages. So basically, my screener says, I want market cap greater than 300 million. I want small cap or, or bigger. I don't want to deal into micro caps or you know very, very small penny stocks. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, I want the ratings of buy, or strong buy or neutral. Again, this is uh, to help me stay in a bullish trend. I want a, a, a sticker that has a bullish momentum with a short term pullback so I can take advantage of that pullback at a very nice risk to reward entry. It's all about managing my risk, is minimizing my risk and maximizing my reward. That's what I want to do. So I want the ratings to be a strong, uh, only common stocks. Uh, sometimes I might add uh, ETFs, uh, but only common stocks because I want the list to be as small as possible and I just want to uh, bounce on, on an idea when it comes. Average true range uh, over the last 14 days is two. Uh, I don't have control over modifying some of these numbers and you will see like my moving averages they will not match with what you see on the chart, uh, but it's just a generally they fall within the range, uh, within an acceptable uh, difference. So uh, it's okay for that. 
But uh, on an average true range, I want a stock that moves at least $2 every single day. So I need some volatility, I need some movement. I need average volume of at least a million shares per day. This is no compromise here, at least a million shares per day. I might drop that down to 500,000 at times if uh, my list is too small, but uh, no less than 500,000. But in general, it's a million shares a day. Uh, of course, uh, only uh, US stocks, is, that's what I'm interested in. And so here's where the moving averages come into the picture. I want price to be above the 100 exponential moving average, above the 200 exponential moving average. It's in the strong buy zone. That's really important for me. And then uh, each moving average in relation to other moving averages, I want the five above the 30. I want the 10 above the 50, the 20 above the 50, the 30 above the 50, the 50 above the 200. And uh, the purpose why I'm setting it up in this way is if I don't put these criteria, then I will get some uh, stock that are not only in a pullback, but are in a very heavy corrections. Right? That's why I want to make sure, you know, what the 100 and the 200 are below the last price, so it's still in an uptrend. Uh, and then some of the smaller moving averages up being above the 50. I don't care much about the 10 being above the 20 because then that's not a pullback. I, I want to allow the pullback, but at least I want them to be above the 50. And then I want the 50 to be above the 200. So when these conditions are met, it is telling me it's just a healthy pullback that I can take an advantage of. And, and then the low, I would like the low to be below the 30. And this, uh, the purpose of this is uh, shallow pullbacks I want to avoid. So if there's a pullback that uh, last is below, let's say the eight, the 10, but uh, below the 20, but not below the 30, it's just not deep enough for me. So that's why I add this one last one here, the low below the moving average 30. So you know, it's 30, it's close enough to 34, 20 is close enough to 21, 5 is close enough to 8, uh, and 50 is close enough to 55. Uh, these are my preferred uh, moving averages. This is what I want to use. As you know, I use Fibonacci extension a lot. So these are Fibonacci numbers, and I want to stick to that. But TradingView gives me close enough, and uh, that's why, you know, even in my Analysis, I can leave the the moving averages up here to see, okay, has it really given me the entry that I want? But I usually don't care. I usually don't put the moving averages on my chart. For today, for the lesson purpose, I leave them there so you can see how they relate to my criteria. So a few more. I want revenue to be at least 50 million for last year. Uh, I want the RSI to be above 30. Uh, if it's below 30, at times what I'm finding is the pullback is not over yet. It's still continuing to pull back. So that's just a way for me to narrow down my list. If I take this out, the list will be uh, much bigger. Uh, and then I want at least uh, 50 million shares float. Uh, that way I know it's it's a heavily traded uh, company. It's not that most shares are held by private uh, owners or maybe the founders and so on. So I just want a lot of uh, float. Uh, sometimes this, uh, even if you eliminate this, uh, this 1 million share per day average will uh, be safe enough. I just like to put this extra uh, value here. Uh, and then uh, total outstanding shares, at least a million. So I, I really want something that allows me to have some real volume. Uh, and I, if I have missed anything, yes, uh, the, I want a beta greater than one, which tells me it moves a little bit stronger than just a SPY. So that's why I like to do that. And so that's uh, my bottom fishing criteria. Once in a while, I might add uh, something else to it. And that is when my list, gets above 
25 above 30 where it's hard to manage then what i would do is i would come down here and say okay uh one year performance above zero i want all of the ones that have performed well but as you can see on this list i don't even have to worry about that because the one year performance has been really really strong uh, so i can do that uh, or i can sort this high to low and focus on the highs that way i don't have to look at all you know 200 maybe you know by focusing on the highs you know above 50 percent maybe my list comes down to 25 that's what i want to do and if everything here is positive then i'll go to the next one six months anything above uh, zero the meaning positive returns that's what i will do if uh, you know my yearly is all positive and my six months is all positive then i go down to the three months so again the purpose is to narrow down my list if my initial criteria gives me a huge result so this is how i select my criteria the next thing that i do is then you know i take all of these and put them in my watch list make sure you have a blank watch list or at least a watch list that you're willing to add to uh, otherwise what do, what it will do is if you have a let's say you know a main watch list that i that you do like my index watch list i don't want to add anything to this list so i don't want to remember to have to delete anything or add anything so i create a brand new watch list and i add it to this watch list and you know uh, next week uh, you know if, i'm sure i would have removed some if uh, i still like some of this list i'll just add to this list or create a new one if this list has a different purpose when i do my new analysis the following week so basically i have my criteria i based on my criteria i had all the stocks in my watch list and then now when i look at my daily i know you know each one of these has a pullback as you can see the criteria has really worked it's in a pullback so each one against the my moving average is pulled back and pulled back and pulled back now the nice thing also about all of this is you see my moving averages are stacked meaning the pullback is not so deep it is a manageable pullback and so in this particular case for example i'm forming a bullish flag so as soon as i break out of the flag i want to get alerted this is where you see this alarm clock here so when this uh, triggers it's for me to enter i might uh, go to the hourly and look for other opportunities as i analyze this every evening for a potential setup so all of this are my swing trades it's not you know morning in evening out it's i'm looking at the daily only using the hourly as my trigger but my exit is based on my daily so if i were to enter here my exit would be set based on this daily movement high to low and you know target one is my one to 72 percent extension so this is how i set my target when i enter it so i'm not saying i am entering this right now because i am not seeing uh, any triggers yet i want some you know we're making higher lows even on a daily if you want to enter on a daily and you see some higher lows made then it is possible to say okay if i break the last open price open or close price and don't even want to go as high as the wick then this could be a potential entry trigger uh, for anyone but uh, you know i haven't analyzed uh, some of these uh, stocks yet because i was looking at last week's list but this is how i am building my watch list this is how i set the criteria for the watch list and then based on that i uh, take a, my trade decision as I analyze each chart afterwards. So once I know these charts are in, as, as you have seen, the moving averages are nicely stacked. So we're in a strong uptrend. I just go to my regular daily chart and I just want price action to dictate what I want to do. Right? We, we formed a double top here. And as a result, we might be breaking this uh, uh, neckline here but we, we really didn't break it on a daily basis. It, it kind of faked us out and 
went back in. So is this something I want to trade? I don't know. I'm just uh, giving you very, very high level. Uh, some pullbacks also, same, same similar situation, a lot of consolidation. I, you know, what I want to see is uh, not too much consolidation like this one, Goldman Sachs, very strong up move, a good uh, pullback. And now when this pullback terminates on my hourly, then I want to take action, right? It's showing here's a low, here's a higher low, and now I'm waiting for it to make a higher high. And so as soon as I make a higher high, this is my alert. I'm ready to go. Right, I'm ready to go at that high and I pull the trigger. So this is how I want to look at my charts and I just want to show you, this is how I am setting up my uh, triggers, my alerts. I don't know why this guy went down there. Okay, boom. So when this triggers, then I can at least take uh, a note and come to the chart and if, see if my narrative still holds, then I can pull the trigger. If not, I discard it. And if I don't like any symbol, if I see that it has moving in too much sideways movement, the only thing is I just come in here and take it out. Very easy, done, and I go to my next one. So mainly I wanted to share with you, this is how I set up my scan. This is the filter that I use. And then based on this criteria, when my list is too big, I narrow it down by the strongest of the bunch. The strongest year to date, the past 12 months, the past six months, the past three months, past months and past week. So down the line, this is what I want to do. And uh, volume, I focus mainly on the volume to see on a pullback, uh, was the volume uh, like uh, above its average volume significantly? If that's the case, then I might be more cautious to see if the pullback could have some more leg to the downside. So I want to make sure that you know pullbacks are happening on lighter than normal volume. There's no big news or no big conviction driving it towards uh, additional downside. So that's why I want to take a look at relative volume. And you know, below one is what I like. When it gets to one, I'm more cautious. I just take a, a deeper look. Doesn't mean I automatically take it out, but I will pay more attention to it around one. Like this one, 1.08, I consider it to be close enough to one. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. So on, on my list, the only one that could be an issue with is uh, Pfizer, which is 1.38. But uh, you know, again, taking a look at that, you know, in relation to everything else, look at the chart. Uh, is uh, is there structure? Is there uh, higher highs, higher lows? Are we at an area of value? Uh, and you know, rating being neutral and seeing this higher than normal volume on a down day, I might just say, ah, you know what? This is not something I, I want to spend any time looking further. Take it out of my list, right? There's plenty of opportunities in this list already. I don't need a brand new list or I don't need to keep adding to this. It's about just shortening my list and taking action based on my list. So hope this has uh, helped you. And uh, my watch list, I will uh, include it in this video. You'll see it up here. Uh, and that will be part of the video that you can watch to get some more uh, information on how I build my watch list. Take care, everyone, and have a good day.